Thanks for rejoining me. We start again with our reading of the 13th century Frisian manuscript, the Orlenda. Please slap the like button on its little tushy. And here we go. All of this is inscribed not only on Warabergt, but also on Berchtstavia, which lies behind the port of Stavra. When Tunis wished to return home, he went towards Denmark, but he might not land there, for so the mother had ordered, nor was he to land at Flyland, nor anywhere about there. In this way, he would have lost all his people by want and hardship. So he landed at night to steal and sailed on by day. Thus coasting along, he at length arrived at the colony of Cadic, Cadiz, so called because it was built with a stone quarry. Here they brought all kinds of stores, but Tuntia, the Bergmagd, would not allow them to settle there. When they were ready, they began to disagree. Tunis wished to sail through the Straits to the Mediterranean Sea and enter the service of the rich Egyptian king, as he had done before. But Inca said he had had enough of those Fendas people. Inca thought that perchance some high-lying part of Atland might remain as an island where he and his people might live in peace. As the two cousins could not agree, Tiunas planted a red flag on the shore and Inca a blue flag. Every man could choose which he pleased, and to their astonishment, the greater part of the Fens and Magyars followed Inca, who had objected to serve the kings of Fendas people. When they had counted the people and divided the ships accordingly, the fleet separated. We shall hear of Tunis afterwards, but nothing more of Inca. Neef Tunis coasted through the Straits to the Mediterranean Sea. When Atland was submerged, there was much suffering also on the shores of the Mediterranean, on which account many of Fenda's people, Krakelanders, and people of Lida's land came to us. On the other hand, many of our people went to Lida's land. The result of all this was that the Krekelanders far and wide were lost to the superintendence of the mother. Tiunas had reckoned on this, and had therefore wished to find there a good haven, from which he might go and serve under the rich princes. But as his fleet and his people had such a shattered appearance, the inhabitants on the coasts thought they were pirates and drove them away. At last they arrived at the Phoenician coast, 193 years after Atland was submerged. Near the coast, they found an island with two deep bays, so that there appeared to be three islands. In the middle one, they established themselves and afterwards built a city wall round the place. When they wanted to give it a name, but disagreed about it, some wanted to call it Raya's Bergt, others Niftuna, Tunia. But the Mag Magyars and Finns begged that it may, might be called Tirhisbergt. Tir was the name of one of their idols, and it was upon his feast day that they had landed there. And in return, they offered to recognize Tiunas as their perpetual king. Tiunas let himself be persuaded and the others would not make any quarrel about it. When they were well established, they sent some old seamen and Magyars on an expedition as far as the town of Sidon. But at first the inhabitants of the coast would have nothing to do with them, saying, you are only foreign adventurers whom we do not respect. But when we sold them some of our iron weapons, everything went well. They also wished to buy our amber and their inquiries about it were incessant. But Tiunas, who was far-seeing, pretended that he had no more iron weapons or amber. And then merchants came and begged him to let them have 20 vessels, which they would freight with the finest goods, 
and they would provide as many people to row as he would require. Twelve ships were then laden with wine, honey, tanned leather, and saddles and bridles mounted in gold, such as had never been seen before. Tunis sailed with the Flymere, with all this treasure, which so enchanted the Gravetmen of the West Flyland that he induced Tunis to build a warehouse at the mouth of the Flymere. Afterwards, this place was called Amanaland, and the market where they traded at Wieringen was called Tulat Market. The mother advised that they should sell everything except iron weapons, but no attention was paid to what she said. As the Thryers had thus free play, they came from far and near to take away our goods, to the loss of our seafaring people. Therefore, it was resolved in a general assembly to allow only seven Thyrian ships and no more in a year. What the consequence of this was. In the northernmost part of the Mediterranean, there lies an island close to the coast. They now came and asked to buy that, on which a general council was held. The mother's advice was asked, and she wished to see them at some distance, so she saw no harm in it. But as we afterwards saw what a mistake we had made, we called the island Micelia, Marseilles. Hereafter will be seen what reason we had. The Gaulin, as the missionary priests of Sidon were called, had observed that the land there was thinly peopled and was far from the mother. In order to make a favorable impression, they had themselves called in our language followers of the truth. But they had better have been called abstainers from the truth. In short, Triwinden, as our seafaring people afterwards called them. When they were well established, their merchants exchanged their beautiful copper weapons and all sorts of jewels for our iron weapons and hides of wild beasts, which were abundant in our southern countries. But the Gaulin celebrated all sorts of vile and monstrous festivals, which the inhabitants of the coast promoted with their wanton women and sweet poisonous wine. If any of our people had so conducted himself that his life was in danger, the Gaulin afforded him a refuge and sent him to Phoenicia, that is, palm land. When he was settled there, they made him write to his family, friends, and connections that the country was so good and the people so happy that no one could form any idea of it. In Britain, there were plenty of men, but few women. When the Gaulin knew this they carried off girls everywhere and gave them to the Britons for nothing. So all these gir girls served their purpose to steal children from Moralda in order to give them to false gods. We will now write about the war between the Bergmogden, Kalta, and Minerva, and how we thereby lost all our southern lands and Britain to the Gaulin. Near the southern mouth of the Rhine and the Scheldt, there are seven islands, named after Freya's seven virgins of the week. In the middle of one island is the city of Wahalagara, Middleburg. And on the walls of this city, the following history is inscribed. Above it are the words, read, learn, and watch. 563 years after the submersion of Atland, that is 1600 years before Christ, a wise town priestess presided here, whose name was Minerva, called by the sailors Nihelinia. This name was well chosen, for her counsels were new and clear above all others. On the other side of the Scheldt at Flyberg, Sirched presided. This maiden was full of tricks. Her face was beautiful and her tongue was nimble, but the advice that she gave was always conveyed in mysterious terms. Therefore, the mariners called her Kalta, and the landsmen thought it was a title. 
In the last will of the dead mother, Rosamond was named first, Minerva second, and Sirhed third in succession. Minerva did not mind that, but Sirhed was very much offended. Like a foreign princess, she wished to be honored, feared, and worshipped. But Minerva only desired to be loved. At last all the sailors, even from Denmark and Flymir, did homage to her. This hurt Sirhed because she wanted to excel Minerva. In order to give an impression of her great watchfulness, she had a cock put on her banner. So then Minerva went and put a sheepdog and an owl on her banner. The dog, she said, guards his master and his flock, and the owl watches that the mice shall not devastate the fields. But the cock in his lewdness and his pride is only fit to murder his nearest relations. When Kalta found that her scheme had failed, she was still more vexed. So she secretly went for the Magyars to teach her conjuring. When she had had enough of this, she threw herself into the hands of the Gauls. But all of her malpractices did not improve her position. When she saw that the sailors kept more and more aloof from her, she tried to win them back by fear. At the full moon, when the sea was stormy, she ran over the wild waves, calling to the sailors that they would all be lost if they did not worship her. Then she blinded their eyes so that they mistook land for water and water for land, and in this way many a good ship was totally lost. At the first war feast, when all her countrymen were armed, she brought casks of beer, which she had drugged. When they were all drunk, she mounted her war ho horse, leaning her head upon her spear. Sunrise could not be more beautiful. When she saw that the eyes of all were fixed upon her, she opened her lips and said, Sons and daughters of Freya, you know that in these last times we have suffered much loss and misery, because the sailors no longer come to buy our paper. But you do not know what the reason of it is, I have long kept silence about it, but can no longer do so. Listen then, my friends, and you may know on which side to show your teeth. On the other side of the Scheldt, where from time to time there come ships from all parts, they make now paper from pumpkin leaves, by which they save flax and outdo us. Now, as the making of paper was always our principal industry, the mother willed that people should learn it from us. But Minerva has bewitched all the people. Yes, bewitched, my friends, as well as all our cattle that died lately. I must come out with it. If I were not Berktmat, I should know what to do. I should burn the witch in her nest. As soon as she uttered these words, she sped away to her citadel, but the drunken people were so excited that they did not stop to weigh what they had heard. In mad haste, they hurried over to Sandefal, and as night came on, they burst into the citadel. However, Kalta again missed her aim, for Minerva, her maidens, and her lamp were all saved by the alertness of the seamen. We'll stop there. Please toss me a like. Thank you.